Hello, we are speaking today about the uh, lambda issues and its uh, consequences on the physiology and the pathophysiology in the case of craniosynostosis. As you can see from this uh, succession of scales from the 28 weeks post-conception to birth to three months to 12 months, you see that the uh, ossification of the calvaria progresses, while the shape of the uh, lambdoid suture and the uh, sagittal suture, which constitute a system for the growth of the calvaria uh, bone, uh, keeps its shape. It uh, acts uh, basically in the same way as the uh, stria and the, uh, on the conch shell, which uh, achieve a harmonious growth of the uh, in a three dimension while keeping as a shape of the uh, of the conch. Uh, how does it work? We see at contrario uh, the, uh, the the effect of the long future by comparing a normal skull with a uh, synostatic skull. Here you can see the outline of the calvaria the, uh, on the lateral view and the position of the uh, coronal suture. And we, if you remove this skull, you see that the uh, coronal suture is held backward, while the occiput is uh, uh, flattened because of the hypo-development of the occiput, uh, occipital bone and the parietal bone, while the frontal bone is uh, overdeveloped because of the uh, of compensation to accommodate for the brain uh, growth. When we see a posterior asymmetry of the calvaria, we have to decide whether it is synostatic or positional. Here you can see a typical uh, parallelepipedic uh, shape of a, a positional deformation because the, um, the lambdoid suture is overstimulated with overdevelopment in the uh, occipital and parietal region and a bulging. Uh, and the anterior parietal aspect and the uh, contralateral side uh, because of overgrowth and also a frontal bulging um, be, uh, corresponding to the uh, parapedic shape of the scale. On the contrary, here you have a, a, a baby with a, a unilambdoid uh, synostosis. You see there is a flattening, but it is caused by hypo-development of the uh, region with uh, um, the coronal suture which is held backward. And also the, um, the, the ear is uh, um, typically held backward and uh, lower than on the non synostatic side. And the, shape, the skull has a, a typical trapezoidal shape uh, opposed to the uh, parallelepipedic shape in the deformation. So we have a comparison between inactive versus overstimulated suture. The lambdoid suture the, has uh, many uh, anatomical variations, which uh, gives rise to the uh, existence of epoctal bones, which are more frequent in case of overstimulated suture, like in uh, sagittal sinusosis, for example. And also, it, you can have this typical deformation, which is named batrocephaly, with occipital bulging, which is, should not be confused with a sagittal sinusosis because all the sutures are uh, patent, and you have additional sutures which correspond to the fusion of the mendozal sutures, which uh, allow the uh, excessive growth of the occipital region. You can also have an epactal bone in this uh, mid, on the midline, which corresponds to an interparietal bone, which is persisting sutures. And you can have a pattern of suture which is completely anarchic, like here or here. And it should not be confused with fracture, which would have obviously uh, medical legal consequences. Uh, what are the volumetric changes in case of uh, lambdoid synostosis? Here you, uh, you have beautiful images in a vestibular uh, superposition uh, created by Philippe Pellerin, uh, applying the uh, theory of Raphael Fena, which was, who was one of my masters. And you can see that in this occipital sinusosis, you have an overdevelopment in the vertical region in red, while the occipital region is hypodeveloped. The lambdoid suture should be seen uh, in many cases as a regional disease. When it is unilateral, you have very often uh, a genesis or hypogenesis of the uh, transverse sinus, and you can have um, occasionally an occipital cephalocene. Uh, 
And it can be an acquired condition, the same patient. You can see that the, this, this child had initially a stiffening of the lambdoid suture, which disappeared progressively. And you, when you have a, a unilateral closure of a lambdoid suture, you have to expect that in the following years, it may complete by uh, con contralaterally or by uh, affecting other sutures. You can have intracranial hypertension associated with uh, lambdoid stenosis because uh, there is a volumetric reduction, which is incompletely compensated by overgrowth in the frontal region. It occurs mostly in case of uh, bilateral or multi-suture stenosis, uh, but it can also be compounded by a CSF problem in case of uh, insufficient drainage of CSF because of hypoplasia of the sinus or compression of the sinus. And you can have tonsillar herniation, can, which can be both the result and the consequence and the cause of intracranial hypertension, it can cause sirens, it can cause sleep apnea, and sleep apnea can further aggravate the intracranial hypertension because of a hypercarbia. Uh, Lambdoid suture, as I said, is often part of a multi sutural system. In, in, it can be isolated in rare cases, but it is uh, underdiagnosed because it is, uh, in fact, a needle in a haystack of uh, positional deformations. It can be uh, an incidental finding, and it is, it is uh, more uh, often diagnosed um, incidentally when you use a laptop-based software. You can spot a few cases of uh, sinusosis which do not have consequences, but have been overlooked by initial uh, examination of the images. Then you can have uh, lambdoid sinusosis associated with other sinusosis, like in this case of uh, uh, Mercedes-Benz syndrome, uh, named like this for obvious reasons. I have no conflict of interest. Uh, it can be associated with a coronal sinusosis, which gives a very atypical uh, plagiocephaly, both anterior and posterior. And it can be associated with uh, multiple sinusosis, uh, very often in uh, uh, complex syndromes and can have very severe consequences, like in this uh, newborn who needed to be operated on day uh, nine of his life with good results. And it can be part of a larger picture with a general disease. In this case, uh, we diagnose a pseudo hypoparathyroidism in this child who required posterior fossa decompression first when he was a baby with a small, with a symptomatic carry. Then he required parietal decompression. Then he had cranioplasty associated with a craniofacial distraction when he developed a facial stenosis. And while becoming adult, he developed this spinal stenosis, who, which will probably one day require surgery. Uh, as I said, these uh, multiple sinusoses are very often associated with a, a syndrome, in most cases associated with different mutations associated with a, a sinusosis, but it can be also associated with different mutations associated with bone metabolism problems like uh, mucopolysaccharidosis or mucolipidosis or other diseases. And it can be uh, associated with uh, chromosomal disease disorders and also with uh, allergic syndrome, like in this case. So you see that you have a, a number of causes uh, of lambdoid synostosis. Uh, it can be uh, mutations in, found in, in current synostosis, other mutations, uh, chromosomal anomaly, or it can be acquired, as I said before. And it can cause isolated lambdoid synostosis, which can be uni or bilateral. It can be associated with other synostosis, as I said, or with regional anomalies or with other uh, body malformations. This is the, uh, the series in Lille. We, we retrieved 41 patients, uh, represented 3.3% of synostosis, in which the lambdoid suture was involved. However, only six patients had isolated uh, lambdoid synostosis, which is 0.5% uh, of synostosis. But you, we know that the, um, the majority of these cases were found in the last cases of this uh, period, uh, which shows that there was an increased focus for this condition. Um, we see that the uh, sex distribution is much screw skewed uh, in favor of maize in case of Mercedes-Benz, 
which is uh, obviously which follows uh, obviously the same pattern as in uh, uh, sagittal synostosis. Uh, and you see that the syndromic context was especially frequent in case of Mercedes-Benz syndrome or of oxycephaly. Uh, the lesions were bilateral in the majority of cases, R right sided in eight cases and left sided in two. This, uh, so there is also uh, a side ratio, which also is reflected, uh, for example, in uh, unique coronal synostosis. And when the uh, synostosis of the lambdoid suture was isolated, um, it was very often uh, associated with a, a transverse sinus agenesis, uh, like shown here. And as I said, uh, it can be associated with uh, a large number of conditions, mostly uh, mutations associated with synostosis or uh, diseases of the bone metabolism. So in conclusion, the lambda future um, has a function for the three-dimensional growth of the calvaria. It can be seen as an adjustment variable following the growth of the, of the brain, but also the external compression, uh, excessive con uh, compression, the environment, and it is also very sensitive to a large number of genetic disorders. So it is associated with a spectrum of diseases according to the number of sutures involved, a syndromic context, a clinical pre uh, presentation, and the age of presentation. So it requires a close co uh, collaboration between clinicians and geneticists. Here I show you a, a, a patient with a typical occipital flattening. He is a celebrity, so I anonymize him, but I give you a clue. I thank you for your attention. You can see more videos on the YouTube and uh, found more uh, data to read on our website.